So in this video, we're going to have a look at marine electronics. We're going to understand what these terms NMEA and CTORC mean, and we're going to work through some of the things that you maybe need to consider when you're going to upgrade your electronics on your boat. So before we get into anything complicated, let's have a look at some basics. So here's our boat. On most boats, you're going to find a depth sounder, and that sends a signal down to the seabed and tells you how deep the water is. In this example, it's a standalone unit and the transducer is connected to the back of the display. We've also got a paddle wheel, which is doing speed and log information, also connected to the back of the display. We've now got a wind instrument, and this is given as wind speed and direction. The sensor for this is at the top of the mast, so you can see the wire here coming down the mast and going to the display. At the moment, none of these instruments are connected together and they don't share any information between each other. If you were to take the display away, the sensor wouldn't be able to send any information. The electronics for that sensor are sat inside the head unit. As you start to add additional instruments, such as a chart plotter or an autopilot to the system, it makes a lot of sense to start networking it. Now that they're networked, the autopilot can receive information from the wind instrument or a track from the chart plotter, and the chart plotter can display different data on the screen, such as the wind, depth, and speed. So this is where the various standards come in, such as NMEA. That sharing of information has to be done in a way that different instruments could understand the same type of information coming across the network. So let's have a look at those different standards and see what's changed over the years. There are a couple of standards prior to NMEA 0183, but this is probably one of the standards that's still on boats today and is still in use. Some of the drawbacks with this type of standard is that it's a talker and a listener type architecture. So what you'll have is you'll have a single talker and several listeners in the system. That talker could be something like a GPS unit and everything else connected to it just listens and picks up that information, for example. One of the drawbacks with this standard is that later on, as you start to get more devices, you need to do something called multiplexing. And what that means is that a central device, like a control unit or a master unit, will actually listen to everything and then put all the data together and then send that data out. The later NMEA 2000 standard doesn't work in this same way and it's also a lot faster. That is a bi-directional, multi-transmitter, multi-receiver network. So you can connect a lot of devices and they will just put their data on the network for anybody to listen to and also anybody else to contribute to as well. NMEA 0183 runs at a board rate of 4,800. And basically what that means is that it's not that fast. So when you want to add things like AIS information to it, you have to change the port speed as I did on my C80 display. Um, to a higher rate so that it can process the amount of information that's coming across. It's also limited in the number of data fields that are actually available within the standard. It was designed for things like autopilots and tracks and GPS, not for you to send things like your engine data, oil pressures, temperature sensors, things like that. It is able to process some of that information, but it is very limited. Raymarine's SeaTalk 1 standard is somewhere in the middle of both of these. I think there is a common misunderstanding that it is actually NMEA 0183, but it isn't. It is a proprietary standard, so it uses its own text fields and information within that data standard. But it does share some of the latest sort of standard technologies, so the devices themselves can actually be connected together and that information can be shared across each unit, giving you bi-directional communication and no need to multiplex the data. So why is any of this important and actually what does it all mean? Well, when you come to upgrade your electronics, you're gonna to have to try and understand what systems you've currently got on your boat and what some of those limitations may be. It may be that you've actually got to convert from one standard to another, so you may need some additional hardware, or it might just be easier to start with a particular device that's currently on your boat as the starting point for your upgrade because that will help support the rest of the system as it develops. The other side of this is it's just good to have an understanding of what this equipment is and how it operates. There are lots of resources on the internet to dig into all of this a lot deeper, but I'm not going to go any further than that. We're just going to start to have a look at some of the common connectors and help you to try and identify maybe what's on your boat. But as I say, if you really want to dig into the standards and how it operates, there are tons of resources out there on the internet. 
Now to try and identify some of these cables and connectors and the NME A0183, it's really quite difficult to give you any sort of key information. What you will tend to see is white, yellow, green, and maybe brown or black wires. Um, those four will either come out of the back of a unit or they'll be on the end of a connector. So here's an example of a connector that's in the back of my C80. And as you can see here, it's a proprietary connector, but it has the NMEA colors and shows you what pins they're connected to. On the back of my VHF, however, I've just got two wires coming out, one yellow and one green. And although that's a Ray Marine unit, it actually doesn't talk C-Talk, it talks NMEA. And you can see here in this picture, I've got the C-Talk network on the left-hand side and the connection to my VHF coming out as NMEA on the right. Here's another example of a Garmin unit with a VHF on the left and a GPS plotter type device on the right. And that device is sending information into the VHF. It's probably providing it with GPS information. And you can see there that they've used a completely different color scheme. But what they have done and what you will have to do is you have to change the transmit and the receive the correct way around. So one transmit out to a receive coming in. And again, this is where you need your manual because that will really help you understand what the device will output and also what the device will receive. So here's another example just taken from the internet. And here we are using the correct color standard. And you can see how the device has got an out and an in networking a chart plotter and a VHF radio. Thankfully, as we move over to NMEA 2000, we start getting some standards. And as you can see here on the ActorSense website, the connector is a five pin round connector. So these are much easier to identify. You can see all the different options coming up here for different uh, cable types, connectors, junction boxes, and it's just much easier to put this network together. What you'll tend to find here is that you'll have a device at one end with a terminator, so that makes marks the end of the network. Then you'll have a sort of a backbone cable, and then what you'll have is um, devices teeing off that at various points. At the other end, you'll also have another terminator. There's always two terminators in an NMEA network, one at each end. So here you can see a couple of examples of CTOR cables. The one on the left is used to daisy chain between the instruments, and the one on the right is sometimes used to extend a cable or to connect to some other type of device that maybe converts it to another standard. That cable will have a yellow for data and a red and a black for power. It's a standard three pin plug. So if you remember just a few seconds ago, I mentioned we've now got a standard, an NMEA 2000 standard. Well, one manufacturer has decided to make a slight amendment to that standard with CTORC NG. Now, this does use the NMEA 2000 protocol, so we're all good on that front. However, the connector is slightly improved. And here we can see that they've changed the pin layout slightly so that the connector cannot be inserted the wrong way. I'm not convinced by that, but what I have noticed also is that in the middle of this connector, there's an extra pin for CTORC 1. Mm, the plot thickens. So now we've started to identify some of the connectors and maybe some of the networks that are running on your boat, it's now time to think about how we would upgrade. This is what my boat network looks like. And as you can see, a lot of my sensors, such as depth and speed and wind, are actually connected to the back of their respective displays. So I'm about to start upgrading my C-series display as it's labeled on the diagram here, the MFD, the screen that shows my charts and things because the display itself is starting to have a few issues. So for me, the device that I'm going to upgrade first is already pre-decided. So what is actually going to happen when I swap that display? Well, as you can see, the Radome, the radar device, is actually connected to the C-series display. And because that's analog, that's not going to work with my new one. So we're going to lose radar capabilities. And as you can also see, a lot of the information comes into mine using CTORC. So it's a CTORC 1 network. The new display doesn't support CTORC. It's NMEA 2000. So what I've got to do is I've got to convert from CTORC to NMEA 2000. Now, thankfully, there are devices out there that will help me and aid me in this process. But it's just something that you need to think about when you're going to upgrade a device. You need to understand what's connected to it and what the impact on the rest of the system is.
if it wasn't for the fact that the C series display was starting to fail, I could have started somewhere else in the network here and essentially replaced all the C Talk devices. So I could have started with the TriData device there at the top and converted the speed and depth unit to NMEA and then put those on the network and replace the display with a multifunction or a more modern version of the same display. There are lots of different ways that you can go about this, but as I say, it's just important to understand what the impact is and whether by upgrading a certain device you could lose something or you're just going to need additional hardware. So I'll just show you what I'm planning and then we'll put some of this in practice. So you can see on the left hand side here we've got the current setup and on the right we've got the proposed setup. So we've switched the C-series display for an Axiom. We've replaced the Radome with a Quantum radar um, and that is just connected using a 12 volt power cable to the system. I'm planning to use Wi-Fi to transfer data between those two. You can also see that the Axiom 9 Plus is connected into the network using NMEA 2000. And between the NMEA 2000 and the CTORC, there's a converter. This converter is changing that data so that the standard is now NMEA 2000. The Axiom is connected to a radar switch. That's the 12 volt supply that is in the boat already. So there's nothing further to do there. But on the left hand side, you can see that there's a GPS antenna. Currently, that GPS antenna actually connects into the converter. So I didn't actually realize I'd got this in my system until I'd recently had a look. I assume at some point the previous GPS antenna has broken and that system has been added later, hence why it was converted. If we were to remove the GPS antenna because the Axiom actually has one built into the display, the VHF, when this system is powered up on the left, will lose its position information so we'll have no DSC on the VHF itself. So I've got to investigate that a little bit further to understand what my options are there because otherwise the Axiom will need to be on before GPS will be received on the VHF radio. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what Joy's lie behind here. So, so here's some, as we said, some practical examples. Just wait for that bird to go. <laughs> okay, so here's some practical examples. Here, this is the back of the pilot, so the autopilot. So you can see we've got a compass. We've got the rudder, we've got the drive unit, and then we've got the daisy chain of the sea torque. So as you can see here, this is how these instruments are connected together. And this one is going following this cable here, going down to this. And this is coming out and it's going into that yellow box down there. So we're just going to try and have the first draft run with the Axiom and just see how we get on. I'm going to connect this into the spur that's down there. Um, and provide it with some power and it should fire up. And straight away, that's working just by plugging into the white spur on the side. There you go, look, it's not a C-Talk NG converter. Well, I do hope you found that video useful. There's gonna be a couple of videos coming out about the electronic upgrades that I've got planned for the boat. We'll see you on the next one.